<laughs> Good afternoon, bookworms and flyleaves. Welcome to this Friday's episode of Author Reads here on Faye Productions. I'm your host, Fairy Princess Lolly, and I am here with uh, Matthew. Le is it Lagare? It's it's pronounced it's pronounced Lagare. It's spelled Lagare. My grandfather came down from Canada. We we don't ask. Okay, <laughs> before. <laughs> So before before we jump into the prime of the show here, first, please, everybody, wherever you're watching from, like, subscribe. Today, we're going to pen the bell. So yes, we do something different to our bell every show. It's more fun that way. So today, we're going to pen the bell. Uh, if you would like to get future notifications of shows. And then also a little shout out to today's show sponsor, which is Fairy Blossom Vendor, Foxes and Ravens. And I'm very happy to be having them at Fairy Blossom next weekend. Actually, they'll be in our virtual market. Foxes and Ravens is an enchanting female owned business for fantasy and fairy tale leather creations. Specializing in custom tooling, they offer a variety of leather accessories for the fair and everyday life in a variety of themes. So they've created a universe to help adventurers navigate their shop. So it's a little, uh, uh, it's a little gamey to go in there and, uh, uh, it's a land called the Guarded Realms, and it's so car called because it is guarded by the great fox and raven spirits. And within the, the uh, within their realm, there's the Elder Grove, which is the home of the elves. You'll find elfy theme uh, things there. The Witch's Cottage, home of magic, and at Fairy Hollow, home of the Fae. And the Shiredom, which is the home of the Hobbits. The Halls of Drakkar, which are the home of the Vikings. And then the great twin cities of Foxford and Corvix. So uh, known for their taverns and libraries. So you can really have kind of a super fun shopping adventure going and checking out their stuff. They also offer gear for wanderers and adventurers. A range of items fit for any fantasy character with several options for customization. Don't be afraid to ask. Every piece is lovingly crafted, uh, handcrafted by Nora at her workshop um, in Canada. So uh, here we have another call back to Canada, right? <laughs> so with shipping to all corners around the world, their information there in the ticker, also in the low bar, please check them out and support our vendors. Let them know where you heard about them from if you decide to purchase. And with that said, then that brings us here into today's show proper. Hey, Erwina, I see you out there. Welcome. And uh, welcome again, Matthew. Yes. So please, if you will, like introduce yourself and uh, tell, us a, tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, give any shout outs. I know we were just talking about local rent fairs. <laughs> so shout out to maybe your home fairs. What? Okay. Uh, well, my name is Matthew Laguerre, and I have I've been making stuff without actually being able to stop for pretty much my entire life. Um, I'm 53 years old, and I was raised in that time when you could, were told that you could do anything you want to do and be anything you want to be, and I was given no further guidance. So <laughs> uh, I went in a lot of directions at once. And I have been writing things and performing things and performing other people's things and making up stuff pretty much from the get-go from there. Uh, bounced around an awful lot. Uh, moved over 26 times. Well, actually, moved 26 times before I graduated from high school. And not just because I was bad at high school. But um, I spent a really nomadic life. We are now finally settled down here. I've lived in about... Over 10% of the states in the U.S. Oh, wow. And we're settled down back here in Texas now in the last house we're going to live in. Uh, sort of the last house I'm going to remember moving into. Your forever home? Oh, yeah. We are done. We are so done. We got rid of all of our boxes. That's how done we are. What? Why Texas? Texas is where I have lived the most, and it's also where my wife was born. So... She spent an awful. She spent all of her early life in Texas, and then then she met me, and I dragged her across half a continent to California to seek my fortune. Somebody else had already found it, and we, <laughs> but that's where I got involved in the Renaissance festivals out there, the Northern California Renaissance oh, Pleasure yeah. Fair up in uh, where it used to be at Black Point Forest in California, and I got involved with that there and ricocheted around performing at the fairs started doing a magic show so i could kind of like cover my own expenses and 
did that, got moved to Oregon from our by our, our day job 13 years after we moved to California. And then six Oregon winters later, we came back to Texas because my wife is from South Texas and had been assured that the snow had the decency to stay in the mountains. We had moved <laughs> to Forest Grove, which is right at the foot of the coastal mountain range. Yeah, we got snowed in. It was fun. But um, that's, a, that's how back. I feel about humidity. I don't want to live in a place where there's humidity and the water is indecent enough to come out and hang out in the air. Just, <laughs> just you know, just right. How you doing? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so here we are now in San Antonio. I've been here for about 10 years. I performed at a number of fairs and festivals all up and down the West Coast and here in Texas. Uh, and as such, have honed, if that is the word for it my ability to just create stuff out of thin air. Uh, and that is one of the things that prompted this this book. How do we actually know that you're reading from that book now that you've said that? What if you just open the book and whatever comes out of your mouth is what you've created out of thin air? <laughs> I, can, I can assure you that what I'm gonna read is gonna be in this book because I'm actually gonna read the words because I don't remember them often. I've suffered a number of blows <laughs> to the head. And also, as I said, I've been a Rennie for well over 30 years now. So uh, that kind of wear and tear, we know, we know. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> um, at, as such, I found find it very valuable to actually write this stuff down. A lot of what we do at the Renaissance Festival is improvisation, just coming up, you know, or as I say, unloading your riff, your riff basket. There are lots of things that we have in the back of our heads that we know how they're going to go. Poetry and written word stuff tends to work better if you can be consistent with it, um, especially the nonsense that I do, because what I do involves not just, not just tempo and scansion and rhyming and meter, but there's an awful lot of alliteration and assonance and just, well, my editor de deemed the, the uh, work homophone hell. So that's where we start. Um, so, so I'm curious, why poetry? Of all the things to write, why poetry? I have absolutely no idea, to be honest with you. Uh, it, it all started when I was looking for another thing that I could do because I'd been a magician for... It's now 18 years. If I perform a magic trick at some event this year, I will have been a magician for 19 years, which is a long darn time to do that sort of thing. You better get on it. I know, it looks right? Looks good on your resume. Book me. Hire me. Somebody. Okay? <laughs> I don't take up a lot of space. Um, but I was actually inspired by uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean Part 2 movie. And, okay. And we can actually... It might actually benefit us and instead of doing the, the the full reading as a block if I just give you some of what I have to contend with and then you have to deal with it too, which is kind of the whole point of this. I, I wanted to get this out of my head and into other people's heads. Uh, for Fair enough. everyone else, I will actually just – I will show you what I'm talking about here. I actually have it up on my screen because it's much easier to, to read it and maintain some semblance of eye contact. Because okay. we know eye contact is important. You see, in the movie, there's a big dramatic scene where they release the Kraken. And my brain kind of went, well, if you're going to release it, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. See, if you're a pirate, you know at some point you're likely to have to release the Kraken. Yes. <laughs> the problem is once you've released the darn thing, sooner or later, you're going to have to go after it so you can put it away. Um, that is true. You're going to have to do some crack and tracking. Crack and tracking. And when you do so, you're going to get hungry. You're going to want to eat. You're going to want to do some crack and track and snacking. Of course, since you're on the move, you'll have to take your provisions with you. So you're going to have to be doing some crack and track and snack and packing. <laughs> and you want to make sure you have enough provisions, maybe a little more than you need, because you do not want to be lacking in your crack and track and snack and packing. Because if you were, you'd likely be derided. Some wag would be giving you flack for your lacking and cracking, tracking, snacking, packing. And if you hadn't eaten enough, you'd be a bit slow on the uptake. You'd be taken aback by the flack for your lacking and cracking, tracking, snacking, packing. 
I I feel like I need to memorize that. Like I, I, I feel a compulsion for it because I love Dr. Seuss and it reminds me of Dr. Seuss and I like to memorize things like that. <laughs> oh, it gets worse. Because being peckish, you'd also be a bit cranky. So you'd be wanting to be giving somebody a smacking and maybe even a schlacking after being taken aback for the flacking and you're lacking and cracking, tracking, snacking, packing. And that sort of beating takes some skill. So people would say you had a knacking and smacking and schlacking. The hack who took you aback for the flacking, you're lacking and cracking, tracking, snacking, packing. <laughs> I have heard people describe this as, pop, as hop on pop uh, with personality issues. So, you know. <laughs> I it's okay. I I highly approve. Welcome I'm over here, to my I'm over world. Here thinking about the um, you know, when beetles fight these battles in a bottle with their paddles. Beetle battle, it's a tweedle beetle battle. When they battle with the paddles, it's a tweedle beetle paddle battle. When they battle with the paddles in a bottle, it's a tweedle beetle paddle battle battle. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I think that's as far as we can go before we hit copyright. So we should stop there on that one. <laughs> I, I I'm pretty sure we're okay. <laughs> so we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Uh, Oh my goodness me. So yes, um, that is the sort of thing. I wrote that and it just sat there. I have performed it once or twice. That the Kraken? I did the Kraken. Yeah, I actually did the Kraken at a couple of variety shows. And I, I threw... <laughs> my... <laughs> this is my editor, Ree, by the way. <laughs> I just, Hello, I just occupy it. I just occupy this space, honestly. Um some people, somebody once said that if I didn't exist, they would have to invent me. And who needs that kind of workload? Uh, but it's, so a, it's a meta workload. They invent you and then you invent work for yourself. And so it's like work and work. And then there's the documentation, which is why I started writing this stuff yeah. down. Because for many years, <laughs> I would just say it and it'd be gone, you know, off in the ether somewhere. And as I started to write this down, it's like, well, that was fun. And I just left it. I wanted to just leave it there. Unfortunately, the universe did not have that plan for me. It decided it had a mind of its own. <laughs> well, the, the thing about this is that most of what I get is inspired by other stuff. It, it doesn't just, thankfully, it doesn't just leap out of my head and come rushing to the forefront. It has to be set off by something else. Um, when uh, the internet has been an amazing source of inspiration, if you want mm. to use that word. And um, there's one that's not in the book. It'll be in the next book, so it's a preview. Is the next book also poetry? The next book is also poetry. It will be Artisanal Gibberish, Volume 2. More gibberish. <laughs> the gibbering. It's true. <laughs> uh, volume 3 will be yet more gibberish, and then we'll have further yet more gibberish, and then the joke will collapse under its own weight, and we'll have to start over. But um, mm. when somebody posted, uh, if you take care of chickens, that makes you a chicken tender, in my brain went, I'm gonna, chicken have to tender. <laughs> I'm gonna have to extrapolate upon that. <laughs> I feel like I <laughs> I'm laughing so much. Okay. I feel like I have to like definitely remember that chicken joke though, because Flora the Fairy, who is on our Wednesday segment with us, she is a chicken tender. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and if she cares about the chickens, that would make her a tender chicken tender. <laughs> She does care about the chickens. She gives me their, she saves me their eggshells. <laughs> there you go. Like I said, but that, that'll be in volume two. And we might actually do that as bonus content. Uh, assuming that I don't manage to completely stampede over all of the time you have laid out for me. Uh, <laughs> yes, you did. All right. Well, I suppose that that, well. All right. Time, the, the, the chickens out of the bag, the chickens out of the coop. Chickens out of the coop. Yep. You haven't missed it yet, my dear. We were about you. You you asked for it, and now, well, here we are. <laughs> we were we were talking about when. How how did it go? If, if, um, you, if you take care of chickens, that makes you a chicken tender. Now that was the post I saw on on I think it was Facebook, and then my brain went, oh, hmm, and then and then my brain went. <laughs> A little bit further. I'm going to see if I can find it now. Yes, here it is. All right. So this is bonus content. This is actually going to be a preview of what's in book two, which will be out in the next few months if all goes well. Uh, so <clears throat> if you work on a farm and your job is to take care of the chickens, you are a chicken tender. And if you have someone do the housework while you are caring for the chickens, that person would be a tender, would be a chicken tender tender. 
<laughs> if that person felt fondness for you, that person would be a tender chicken tender tender. And you would pay that person in tender chicken tender tender legal tender. <laughs> that money could be carried across the water in a tender chicken tender tender legal tender tender. And the contract to carry the money on the boat across the water to pay the kind person who takes care of you while you take care of the chickens will be a tender chicken tender tender legal tender 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 tender. You might ask, how did you find the kind person to take care of you while you take care of the chickens? Tender chicken tender tender legal tender 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 tender. <laughs> Welcome to the inside of my head. <laughs> no, it will never stop. I, I think I love the inside of your head. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is good. Oh, my face. So, here's how we normally do this. I think it's going to be a little bit different because you, your work here is a little more short form. But normally, how we do this is I will give you the whole screen. You can read until you feel satisfied and holler for me to come back. Mm -hmm. And then I'll bring us back together as you see us now. And during the time while you're reading, I will be in the audience in the comments, uh, ready to take questions from anybody that may have them, or I don't know, maybe just lots of laughs because <laughs> we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll just go here. Um, thankfully enough, I actually have more, I have more plans. So we're good. And I think I've got, uh, yeah, we could definitely do this. We can definitely do this. And everything else I will be reading will be out of volume one. Okay. Available at, find booksellers everywhere yes so i so i'm going to turn the whole screen over to you and uh put myself on mute and then just when you are ready for me to come back and uh talk about peace just let me know and i'll bring us back together all right <laughs> okay so let's see okay so <clears throat> whoa it's a much bigger screen yes this is where i write an awful lot of my stuff and as you can see it is every bit as organized as my brain is one of the things that happens a lot is that I encounter things in the wild, as I said, and I am then motivated to write about them. The chicken piece is one of them. The um, there's another there's another thing that happens too, and I'm curious to see whether or not this actually will play well audibly as it does visually, because what I'm about to give you are different words that actually mean that that sound the same, or as my um, or as my editor put it, homophone hell. You see, the Pope in, it has a water cannon in the Vatican for the blessing of large crowds. It is a holy water cannon. Now, he has blessed this device, so it is a holy, holy water cannon, and he has blessed this device very thoroughly. It is a holy, holy, holy water cannon. Still with me? This blessed device has been well documented, so we have a holy, holy, holy water cannon cannon. Sadly, over the years, this blessed device has sprung a few leaks, so we have a holy, 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 holy water cannon cannon. And due to the leaks, the Pope has had an additional reservoir installed upon it, which makes it a holy, 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 holy water cannon can on cannon. Yes, it is not easy to read these things. I, I have so much, so much respect for my editor who managed to survive not reading it, not just once, but multiple times. The other thing that happens is that sometimes I will see, well, as I said, sometimes I'll actually encounter something in the wild. In this case, let me see what I've done here. Yes, that um, someone has posted again on the interwebs. <laughs> You should see what Spellcheck did. Yes. The, my work is not kind to Spellcheck. I think I've actually had a Spellchecker give up at one point. Uh, but what I saw one day, and much in the same vein, so to speak, as the chicken tenders is, well, a device which uses suction to clean things is a vacuum cleaner. Now, when you clean a vacuum cleaner, you become a vacuum cleaner cleaner. If you then take a shower to clean all the dust off of yourself, the shower becomes a vacuum cleaner, cleaner, cleaner. Then you have to scrub the shower, which makes you a vacuum cleaner, 
cleaner, cleaner, cleaner. And if you use a vacuum cleaner to clean the shower, it becomes a vacuum cleaner, 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 cleaner vacuum. I went to college for six years. Eventually, they just gave up and gave me a degree so they could get rid of me. What did I get my degree in? Theater. I did major in academic probation for many years, however. Let's see here. There are there's so many things that happen. As I said earlier on, I am a Ren geek. And as such, I encounter interesting bits of the historical stuff in the context of the Renaissance Festival, and then I immediately feel like I have to make something silly out of it, because that's just the way the world works. Oh, by the way, my name is Matthew. I'm afraid to... Uh, I'm not sure who John is, but by golly, I wish him well. And he could be reading this for me, if he uh, dared. I'm so right. sorry. It's okay, it's okay. I I'll answer anything. Right. <laughs> uh, Matthew, Tobias, the adequate, stop, see, take you with the head. You know, it's, it's all right. It's, yeah. <laughs> It's all right. It's okay. It's M A T. Like the one banner that I didn't ask you to check before I pushed the live button, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I do a streaming music show, and I uh, have said on more than one occasion, it's not a real Troubadour show unless there's one glaring technical fumble. There we go. See? Yay! There we go. Okay. Well, now Matthew will. I will now, since it's now got my name on it, I will now read all the stuff I just read again. You know, now that we now that we know that everybody finds this hilarious, uh, it's okay to reveal your true name. That way, uh, you you know that John guy. It was it was okay if nobody liked that, right? Like it's it's the poet <laughs> witness protection program. That is correct. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We are uh, we are we are protecting po tasters from angry mobs with pitchforks and torches and shovels. Who brings who? You know who makes the most out of those angry mobs? It's a pitchfork and it's a pitchfork and torch concession. I'm pretty sure. You know, you never see those at the festivals either, and you think they would sell well, but I digress. One of the things about Renaissance festivals, you do have a chance to catch up on history. And when I found out about this, which I found out after spending a lot of time with the folks that play the royal court at the Scarborough Renaissance Festival. Big shout out to Scarby, my uh, current home fair, or at least they put up with me the most. And a number of members of court and the nobility are members of the Order of the Garter. And the festival actually runs the week that surrounds April 23rd. I'm going to get to my point on this in just a moment here. <laughs> Poet Peer Production Program, yes, indeed. Um, so you see, April 23rd is St. George's Day. This is the day when new appointments to the Order of the Garter are announced, and that is one of the old, the highest orders of chivalry in England. It was founded by King Edward III in 1348, so it's a big deal. Now, these initiates into the order might be known as Garter Starters. Both chivalry and wit are valued as criteria for membership into the order. These are the smarter garter starters, as is creativity. So these individuals are, in fact, the artier, smarter garter starters. As I said, this is the highest order of chivalry in King Henry's England, so these appointees must be very, very brave. They are the heartier, artier, smarter garter starters. And while this is a solemn order, there is a great deal of celebration after the ceremony, making these the party hardy, hardier, artier, smarter garter starters. So much so that sadly, sometimes these men may rebel a bit too much and must be hauled back to the castle in a party hardy, hardier, artier, smarter garter starter cart by a party hardy, hardier, artier, smarter garter starter carter. Occasionally, such as after a good hard war, there are a number of new appointees, which means we need more than one party hardy, hardier, artier, smarter, garter, starter cart, and traffic gets con bit confused in the return to court. So that we have a party hardy, hardier, artier, smarter, garter, starter cart athwart another party hardy, hardier, artier, smarter, garter, starter cart, resulting in the loss of one of these vehicles, making for a party hardy, hardier, artier, smarter, garter, starter, carter, martyr. The poor pilot of the lost cart 
must try and trade the wreckage of his vehicle for something more of value, which may be obtained through party hardy, hardier, artier, smarter, garter, starter, carter, martyr, barter, which he could then use to get another vehicle at the party hardy, hardier, artier, smarter, garter, starter, carter, martyr, barter, cart, mart. I have a room in the Tower of London. Okay, it's a trap door with my name on it, but it still counts. Doesn't matter that it's in chalk, but still, it still counts. So you see, this is the sort of thing that I have to contend with on a regular basis. These things wander into my head, get stuck there, and then I have to write them out. Sometimes I start with a small part, and then I figure out what I'm going to do. Yeah, the grammar checker has actually given up. Um, I am on its naughty list. The um, Sometimes I start have something at the very beginning that I know I'm going to do, and sometimes I have a punchline at the end that I just want to get to. And I'm pretty sure that we can get to it. I'm going to do one more piece here before I, I beg for forgiveness. Let me see here. Where is it? Yes, yes. This is actually a genuine historical thing. Another genuine historical thing here. As soon as I can find it. Where the heck did it go? Oh. I know I've got it in here. Yes, yes, yes. That's why. I couldn't remember what I called it, which says a lot. You see, in the time of the Renaissance festivals, the Tudor and Elizabethan period, there is an arrangement between Scotland and France known as the Auld Alliance, A-U-L-D. This has been going on for some time. It is an old Auld Alliance. Now, Scotland gets pretty chilly, making this a cold, old Auld Alliance. And the members of this alliance are considered to have great fortitude, making this a cold, a bold, cold, old, old alliance. See, it's not even easy for me to do. The members of this alliance are given an emblem or insignia, which indicates their participation in the arrangement. This emblem is known as the bold, cold, old, old alliance appliance. The participants in this arrangement are asked to keep this emblem in view on their clothing at all times in order to maintain the bold, cold, old, all the alliance appliance compliance. Now, while this is not a particularly expensive emblem, there are some who may aspire to rise in status and will even go so far as to purchase an even shinier emblem, getting a gold, bold, cold, old, all the alliance appliance, which in some case could be seen as gold, bold, cold, old, all the alliance appliance compliance defiance. But that kind of leaping above your status could put one in debt, resulting in some poor sod engaging in gold, bold, cold, old, all the alliance, appliance, compliance, defiance, refinance. It's a deep shame to have to pawn this emblem because nobody wants to see somebody wearing, wandering around with a sold gold, bold, cold, old, all the alliance, appliance, in defiance of the refinance, making the previous owner of the sold gold, bold, cold, old, all the alliance, appliance, compliance, defiance, refinance have to quit the clan and try pants. So you see, sometimes sometimes you just want to get to the cheap joke, really. I, <laughs> I'm i loving this so much. <laughs> Welcome to my world, honestly. It's fabulous. <laughs> I think that might be, um, let's see here. So we, did, we do have a question that yeah. came in during that last one, which was, do you have a favorite word that you like to use the most? Hmm. That is tricky. That really is. In looking back over it, I have to say that I don't know that I have a favorite word per se, because so much of what I do, it, it's all about the the cadence and the rhythm. And you notice, especially with that last one, with the old with the old alliance, there's a moment where it just becomes an ex, an extended drum solo. Really, you're just you get this. <laughs> you're just that point where the guy just hits all the drums. That's yes. what that that last paragraph felt like. And yes, it was a paragraph, and it was all one sentence. I will say that there are definitely some words that I really enjoy using a lot. I love digging back into the language to find the most complicated way to say a simple thing. <laughs> um, I love the word issue, for example. It's a great word. You don't get it out there very much at all. Yeah. Um, I love the word skedaddle. I'm not entirely sure what skedaddling 
is, but I'm pretty sure it involves elbows. I'm pretty sure there's like a lot of knee and elbow action and in, in getting from ski daddling from one place to exactly, exactly. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this way, mess up the camera. Why not? <laughs> These things. <clears throat> There, there's a lot of, of just random stuff that floats around in my head all day long. And part of the reason for that is because like many children of the 70s, I was raised mostly by television. A <laughs> pattern of benevolent neglect. Uh, the basic plan was if the kid is not on fire, feed him occasionally and you're doing well. And because I watched a lot of television, I watched a lot of really well-written sitcoms because we had... Yeah, we didn't have 4,000 channels, but we had at least six. And there was a lot of stuff that was in heavy rotation. And these sitcoms were all written by people that are very, very bright and very witty. And there was a lot of great banter. And I thought that banter was just something you were supposed to be able to do spontaneously. Yes. And I took my 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 fragile little Play-Doh mind and uh, I, I just molded it and bent it and twisted it around so that I could have these things just ricocheting around in my head to just come out with them. Only learning several years later that it was rooms full of people who would just sit around and just beat their head against things until the funny came out. And <laughs> I, by which point it was too late for me. And um, I wonder if this is how to, Monty Python did things. <laughs> that's that's why I, that's why I went to a state college. And uh, <laughs> oh oh, you know Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Okay, I have to I have to share this now because welcome to my head. In that scene where they are going, domine. Wow. yeah, yes, the words they are actually saying are "Ie domine, donna ei sorequiem," which is, uh, "Jesus Lord, give us rest," or more colloquially, "Oh God, make it stop." Oh God, make it stop. <laughs> Puts it into context, don't it? <laughs> Especially that part. So. Do you find that, because I know that we're not really quite to the Q&A part, but, you know, do you find that these things, when they want to come out, that you have to, like, your brain just keeps working and working and working and working on it, and then pretty soon it gets to a point where you're like, wherever you are, you have to, like, pull over on the side of the road or just, like, get your notebook out and, like, <sighs> at least scribble notes or something for yourself. I got to say, I'm very glad that we live in the future. Because there is an app that I have on this device right here that is called Evernote. And I use that a lot for my gibberish. I can write it down and I can and it just saves it everywhere. And then I, I throw it out onto the into the cloud hmm. where my editor then has to cope with it. Um I Evernote. Yep. Hmm. E Evernote, and I use like, Google Drive a lot, a lot. As a matter of fact, um, my editor and my publisher can both attest to the fact that I pretty much live on Google Drive when it comes to getting my words out to where someone else can try and make them, organize them in some way. Um, my, 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 yes, I, yes. I'm sorry, I just saw the, one of the comments, my comment from my editor was like, sigh. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I owe you like a nice fruit basket or something. Um, but it is, I, I am very much a lover of notebooks and I have filled a lot of these things with yes. a lot of stuff. Um, I started using the technology when I discovered that if I'm at my day job and a thought hits me, I can just click a screen Type frantically and then be done and get it at least out there. Yeah. <laughs> Extra strength with it's pickles. <laughs> Extra strength with pickles. Extra strength what? <laughs> An extra strength fruit basket. Oh. <laughs> pickles pickles aren't fruits. That's okay. I love pickles though. You know, I, I drink pickle I, juice. <laughs> I think that we could probably we come up we come we could come up with a good reason to put pickles in a fruit in a fruit basket. I'm almost certain. Um you just, Look, if people can put pickles in a Christmas tree, they can go in a fruit basket. <laughs> you just put them on spike, you stab them into the pineapple in the middle, it makes a nice big, it gives you a nice centerpiece, you know, kind of pulls the whole fruit basket together, which pickles is a thing pineapple. no one else has ever said before. Uh, but um, 
And I do often. I have to <laughs> don't start me. She see see that's my editor there. Uh, I sense a poem coming on. <laughs> tomatoes, that's true. Pickled tomatoes are a pickled fruit, and salsa is a fruit salad. So I love salsa. And that's one of the ways we find out who the bard in the group is, is with the person who says, Oh, and you know, salsa is a fruit salad. Guys, we found the bard. Um, <laughs> I've been accused of that, and I'm coming to terms with it. Of course, I also do music, so it doesn't I mean, matter. literally coming to terms with it. it very much so. <laughs> currently, I currently when I write it, I write it B A R R E D because it makes more sense. Bard. I have been barred from many places. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I do, I do have these things. They bounce around, and I have to get them written down. And um, I have had moments where I have just had to tell him, you know, we were about to go to bed. It's like, <sighs> I'll be back. I have to write something down. Okay, so I write it down. Then I don't have to think about it until later. And that's really what it is. It's just a way of being constructively, of constructively procrastinating. I'm just going to push this idea out for like, you know, a few hours so I can get some rest. Otherwise, I will lay in bed thinking about it. Just like around and around and around. Oh, it gets, it can and you get try weird. not to forget, you know? So it's like you got to put the thing there so that the brain can push exactly. on. <laughs> if you, no matter how brilliant your idea is at 1130 at night, if you do not <laughs> write down something. Yeah. At 8 o'clock in the morning, whatever that idea was, it's gone. And you it's just true. have to hope that it will come back, you know? Preferably at a convenient time when you can write it. When you, when you, yeah, when you can write it down without having to get out of bed and, you know, <laughs> drapes around and the house. The whole writing everything it. down thing is also part of my day job because I do support. And one of the things I learned about support is you write everything down. That way, in the event that you are hit by a bus, whoever's there to clean up after you can find out what's going on. Um, I actually recommend that for just about everybody. Getting hit by a bus? Writing things down. <laughs> I do not advocate getting hit by a bus. I can tell you right now, there's very little to recommend it. Um, <laughs> Even, no matter how hard the bus driver apologizes, there's very little to recommend it. Remember I told you I've been struck in the head many times? Well, uh, there's a certain amount of distance between the curb and your head that you have to allow for. Otherwise, the side view mirror of those school buses come real darn close. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm fine. I have that. almost <laughs> no side effects whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Not speaking from personal experience or anything. No, no, no. no, no. Why, why would I even... Why would I even allude to any kind of... You know, this is almost entirely um, self-taught organic and not due to anything being actually wrong with me in the clinical sense. I'm, I'm curious, is this style of poetry re uh, related to your live performances at Ren Fair? Have you kind of taken the skills that you, cause you know, you have to, you have to have a shtick right? Mm -hmm. When you get up there, you know, yeah. people don't just jump on a stage and do a thing. And so that of course involves some level of, you know, writing, whether you you've memorized it in your head because you've done it so many times or you've written it down and practiced it, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever, but have you kind of converted what you once were doing in Ren Faire into the poetry on the page? And then do you find that these things are interchangeable like once you're doing them on the page you're like oh this would be an excellent stand-up shtick kind of a thing yeah there's you know sketch it's one of those weird things where i came into i've been a performer my entire life the first time i was actually on stage when i was is when i was six years old i was wow. a sheep i was a substitute sheep i was the only kid small enough to fit the sheep suit <laughs> and they uh, stuffed me into it and put me on stage during a nativity play where a girl scout stood beside me and sang i am the sheep with the curly wool and that was i was pretty much stuck with that um i i think that in a lot of ways i started doing fair as an excuse because i was going to be an actor and i'm standing in a cow pasture and waxahachie living the dream um and I, I did it because I wanted to build my improv shops more. And right. the California fairs at the time were very much free range, all improv, all the time. Scarborough Festival is the same way. If you see, uh, if you see a participant performer out there in their character, they are just making this stuff up as we go along. It is 
all over the place, and it's a glorious thing uh, for somebody like me who can't stop doing it. Literally, right. I've tried. It gets I get headaches. Um, but so what I discovered was that free association is one of your real free association is your friend in so many ways in improv and also in writing this kind of poetry because you have to let the thoughts just bounce around and then two ideas that stick together in the big bingo ball machine in my head and then the gravity of that just adds more stuff and a lot of this is bolting words onto each other to see just how hilarious it can go before it before you run out or before it falls over and catches on fire uh, when I do this sort of thing, and I have done an artisanal gibberish show at the Sherwood Forest Fire Festival, and also at um, Steampunk November, the thing that oh. you have, the, the key that I learned is something I learned when I was being a magician, which is this kind of variety entertainment, you have to give the audience a reason to care and you've got to put it in context real fast because the majority of variety entertainers at fairs and festivals are easy to spot. Oh, he's doing music. He's juggling. He's shoving a sword into his face. They're forming a human pyramid. He's got a whip. You know, you know what's going on in, in right. you know, intrinsically. If it's just a guy standing up talking, you have to take a moment and you have to try to, Work out, okay, is this worth stopping for? Magic is even harder because magic is entirely context-free entertainment. You you have to get them in then the beginning and then the middle and the end, and poetry is very much the same way. And so when I do this on stage, I do have a tendency to affect a rather hard done by demeanor. As this, as I've said before, it's man versus poetry. Poetry is a head on points, but I think I can take him in the last round. <laughs> And um, as such, there are beats in the work that I can stop, pause, and just look out at the audience. And just, you see what I have to deal with here? Or my personal favorite, which is just lean into the amplification and just say, it gets worse. And, <laughs> and they go, it gets worse? Fantastic! So clearly I'm doing something right there. Uh, so it's kind of, it cross-pollinates. Yeah. I have been... At this point, if I didn't have this, I could probably kill 20 minutes on stage, and I have killed 20 minutes on stage, <laughs> I'm wandering up and saying, oh, look, an audience, and just go from there. Um, the poetry gives these disorganized thoughts some structure, which helps a lot, mm -hmm. an awful lot. I, I can understand that. <laughs> Relatable. Yeah, and music is the same way. And I've been doing some more music too. I've been doing a, a live stream music show. Which oh, cool! Two hundred and fifty, which is nice. Important. What kind of what do you play? Um, well, I call it geeky, nerdy, goofy music for geeky, nerdy, goofy people. Silk under the phrase under the umbrella of troubadour. Troubadour <laughs> with a K. I've noticed there's a number of <laughs> albums titled that, but no acts are dumb enough to call themselves that. I am dumb enough to call myself that. And it's a mixture of some filk, some traditional music, and an awful lot of original stuff, including songs about lycanthrope dating. Um, my personal favorite, the one the one most appropriate to this show is one called Faye's Lament, formerly entitled, I Couldn't Run Away with the Faye, the Faye Ran Away from Me. <laughs> Aww. I, I, I love filk. So that's a, no. that's a thing. No. No so kidding. You, what mm -hmm. instrument do you play? I play the ukulele. And this one, in fact, is a... I thought um, it was pronounced a ukulele. Well, it's it's, it's ukulele, ukulele. I'm going to call it ukulele until somebody tells me to stop. Okay. Um, this one right here is a tenor, ukulele, ukulele, which is the equivalent of taking a regular guitar, take the two lowest strings off, and then cut about five frets off the neck, and that's what you get. And um, that's not actually a song. That's just making sure it's, the strings still work. Uh, it's taken me a while to figure out what the strings are for, but I've been writing songs for that as well. Um, not as convoluted as the gibberish, although I have given some thought to setting some of the stuff that I do in artisanal gibberish to music just to see what would happen. Well, so now... <laughs> that would be awesome. Error. So 
error would happen. If, if it was set to music, man, I would memorize all of it. That's how my brain works. Mm -hmm. You want me to memorize something, slap some music onto it, and there it is. Yes, so make it rhyme and slap music onto it, and, and then my brain memorizes it whether I want it to or not. <laughs> so that's a that's a thing. Yeah. Um, I, I was gonna I was gonna ask since you have since you do that do you have your own YouTube channel because I do I, you do I do indeed I do indeed um, what is it let's let me put it in the comments for okay. you I don't think I had that on the forum yeah, so let me, uh, let me can I hoist one off yeah here we go it is youtube.com slash m p l e g a r e and uh, there's a Troubadour channel, and there's an Artisanal Gibberish channel as well. And for more Artisanal Gibberish, I would also direct folks over to the Unruly Voices YouTube page, which I don't have a URL for them, but if you look up Unruly Voices, an imprint of Paper Angel Press. Um, well, then... and certainly all of your stuff is also in the low bar as well. Uh, I, I want to say, everybody, please, when you get a chance, run over there and raid that channel and give it some likes <laughs> so appreciate that a great deal please help drag me out of the uh, obscurity that i'm in into the category of slightly less obscure yeah basically in youtube land i once was obscure but now i'm slightly less so mm -hmm. I, so i we have eight minutes left i mean i don't pumpkin or anything at three o'clock but I, I was curious if we could hear maybe one more thing from your book and during okay. that time i'll take any last questions from the audience yeah. and then we will get around to doing the drawing for the giveaway all right let me see here will be a good one you don't want to give away the entire shop ah this one is in fact dedicated to my editor because she was the inspiration for it she may know which one it is. My friend has a purse. Inside this purse is a smaller purse for coins or su and such. Therefore, it is a recursive purse. When she makes a payment using, using coins from the smaller container, that is a recursive purse disbursement. That makes her a recursive purse disbursement bursar. Now, some people don't like to be paid in change, and thus they would be adverse to a recursive purse disbursement by my friend, the recursive purse disbursement bursar. So she has taken pains to be as genteel about it as possible and has even made it rhyme. So as not to rile the adverse during a recursive purse disbursement, she has rehearsed a recursive purse disbursement bursar verse. I can actually tell you exactly when that one was inspired because we were at dinner. <laughs> And I saw her make a payment. It's like, you've got a purse in your purse. She said, yes, I do. <laughs> that makes it a recursive purse. And she gave me a look because she knew it was coming. She knew it was <laughs> what was on the way. <laughs> we are so now separated by half a continent, so she can't actually throw things at me, which is good. Uh, so, okay. So, everybody, I, we have a couple questions out yeah. there, and this is how this works. I'm going to, uh, while I'm asking these last questions, please Put your name into the comment section right now if you would like to be entered onto the Wheel of Win for a copy, a signed copy of, yes, of this book, Artisanal Gibberish. I so, will actually sign a real copy of this real book with a real pen. I will sign it with this real pen. All right. This is an erasable pen. We don't want to do that, no. Yes, real so pen. now is the time to put your name into the comments. Now, let me pull up... Uh, I wish I could put my name into the comments. I I super want a copy of this book. Okay, so uh, where, let's see, here we go. Do you think this prose might help children learn weird English language phenomena? I think that it could. I think that it would be useful provided that additional context was used, um, mm -hmm. particularly illustrations. I would love to eventually do some illustrations, an illustrated version of some of this. But first, I have to find uh, an illustrator who's willing to draw this nonsense. And <laughs> that is actually a big deal. Um, but I, I think it could be very useful. I've had people say that it's it got them more interested in, in, in the weirdness of the English language. As we all know, the English language hides in corners yes. and mugs other languages for loose grammar. Yes. 
instead of German where you just bolt bits of words together to form new words, we just shake down other languages for whatever they've got handy. It's and true. But also it. German has words that are, you know, way yes. long because they just keep adding stuff till they get the specific thing that they want. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a lovely game to play. If you have anybody, if you know anybody who speaks German, just ask them, okay, what's the longest German word you've ever used? And watch the wheels spin because it can get kind of, it can get pretty astonishing. Farfing Nugan. So <laughs> probably <laughs> might, might actually be the longest German word I personally know. <laughs> Thank you. What Volkswagen? I don't know. Uh, so here we have this. This is just my question for you now. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question is, have you ever tried to time yourself to read as fast as possible? I haven't. And I will tell you why. Um, I have performed Gilbert and Sullivan's Pirates of Penzance, and I have been the model of the modern major yes! general. <laughs> and it is an exercise to see how fast you can churn through that. Now, that is when the words are written very deliberately to have a certain scansion. Mm-hmm. If I tried to read the entirety of the uh, of, of some of these pieces, the, 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 the timing and the tempo has to change up here and there. As I've said before, especially with Order of the Garter or Kraken or when I haven't read, but it's in the book, about um, King Henry VIII when he was between wives and his older sister, uh, Queen Margaret of Scotland and the Isles, there's a moment where it just... I could probably get through part of it really fast, but the rest of it is a series of speed bumps, and I'd really kind of be afraid of injuring myself some way by by doing it. Uh, chicken tenders, I could probably do faster. I could do chicken I like tender, I could do tenders. holy water cannon pretty <laughs> fast. The shorter pieces, I'd have the I'd have the the nerve to try. The longer pieces, I I, I have some small amount of self preservation sense left in me, so I <laughs> probably want to leave that be. All right. Well, so with that said, I, that is the last of young questions. And so I'm going to go ahead and pull this down and pull up our, I don't, I don't do I have any more names out there? I'm going to pull up our wheel of win here. An actual book, an actual genuine book made of actual genuine book parts. If it wasn't a real book, I couldn't do this. That's what a real book sounds like. I'm waiting for you to perform a magic trick with uh, with one of these books. That's, that's what I keep waiting on, <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't tempt me. It will happen. All right. So with that said, then, I am going to submit the names to the wheel. Now, there are actually three ways you guys can get your name onto the wheel in the future, obviously, by putting your name in the comments during a live show. But also, if you join our YouTube channel and or our Patreon, you can get one extra entry per each place and you will automatically be entered no matter where you are. And if you win and you aren't, don't happen to be watching that day, we will contact you. So here we go. You Boom. Need to be present to win. Yes. That is a really yeah. awesome year, by the way. Congratulations, Yonella. Yonella. You have won today's book. She'll be thrilled about She wins all the time. <laughs> She's on everything. So she is like in every drawing ever. Wow. Okay. Yep. Well, all we need is an address. Yes, which I will get to you after the show. So Excellent. Awesome. Fantastic. And I really yeah. did that wheel. That is a useful wheel. It, it is a most useful wheel. So, well, thank you, everybody, then, for tuning in this afternoon. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe button. And also, uh, Matthew's information is in the low bar. You can find it at any point in time after the show. It does not come down. You just have to go and look in the descriptor, and there it will be. So you can go and order his books if you do please remember to leave him a review because that's always helps. So, so, uh, uh, and I think with that said, is there anything that you would like to add in there on the end? Wow. Well, I want to thank you all for helping to support adequacy in our lifetime. And um, well, when your name's Tobias the Adequate, the jokes kind of write themselves. Uh, <laughs> never let your wife name your act. But thank you for the, thank you very much for letting me read some of the, uh, this stuff that I generate for y'all. Yes, absolutely. And thank y'all for listening, because without you there, what we do here is even harder to justify.
<laughs> Strangely, that's sort of true. Uh, so yes, uh, one one last thing I do want to say. Also, today's Friday, so tomorrow we actually have a hedge game at seven o'clock in our Discord channel, the Hedge. So if that is a thing that you like to frequently join us for. Uh, please be aware, and I hope to see you guys tomorrow in the hedge for the game. Next weekend is Fairy Blossom Festival, so goodbye, everybody. Have a happy Friday and a great start to your weekends. Aloha. Hello, friends. This is Gone for Hammerhands. Thank you for checking out Fairy Princess Lolly's channel. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Use your troll hammer to ring that little bell icon to get notifications when she posts future videos. And if you'd like to support these magical creations, fly over to our Patreon and join the fairy family.